Hey guys, happy Monday. I hope everybody is doing well out there. Uh, one of the things, of course, that we focus a lot on with this channel is installing additional applications and that sort of thing into Docker uh, and Portainer and that sort of thing. Uh, and as a result of that, I'm a member of uh, the Portainer subreddit. And uh, yesterday, as I was scrolling through Reddit, a post from the Portainer subreddit popped up uh, from a, a guy or actually a couple of guys who have been working together to put together uh, a, an app template script, I suppose, that has, uh, they're saying 83 apps and counting. So uh, what I want to do in this video is uh, kind of uh, basically get those apps uh, imported into uh, the app template section of Portainers. So uh, this should be pretty straightforward. I haven't really looked into this at all. Um, I, I ran the script once to see how easy it was to work or how easy it was to uh, get set up. Uh, that part was uh, almost obscenely easy, uh, in my opinion, um, but I haven't actually installed any of the apps in this template. So that's kind of what I want to do is I want to show you how to uh, go and add the app template and then actually uh, maybe install a couple of apps uh, to get things going here. One of the big issues I face as a content creator revolves around hard drives. Videos take up storage space and my computer case doesn't have a lot of space for hard drives. Luckily, the folks over at IcyDoc sent me their Tough Armor 2.5 inch PCIe Hot Swap Mobile Rack. Installation was super easy and it lets me swap out hard drives without having to shut down my system. Be sure to check out IcyDoc's website for their full product line. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, over here is, of course, the uh, the subreddit or the, the Portainer post uh, where they've got uh, all of the information here. Uh, if we if we pop open this link here, uh, here you can see uh, the script or the the uh, the JSON file uh, that they used to configure everything. And of course, that's a very long file because again, there are 83 apps in this script. So, uh, with that being said, what you can do. Uh, if we click on their self-hosted templates link link there, of course, I will have links to all of this uh, either in the description or in the blog post. I don't know if I necessarily need a blog post for this one, uh, but, but look, go look in the description. Something down there will point you in the right direction. So if we scroll down uh, here, we can see prerequisites, uh, the process for installing, a bit of information here. And then if we scroll down a little further, uh, here's the full app list. Again, uh, links to all of this will be available uh, somehow via the description down below. Uh, so what we want to do is actually close this. Uh, here we've got a, uh, a brand new install of Open Media Vault. You don't need an, a brand new install. Uh, I just had something else installed on here and I just went through the process of reinstalling Open Media Vault this morning so that I could make this video. So uh, what we want to do um, is uh, make sure that we have uh, Docker and Portainer installed. It looks like we do. Uh, so what we want to do uh, is actually jump over here to port 9000. And again, I, I haven't done anything with this yet. So let's go ahead and uh, create an account here. Like so, of course, we're going to do everything local. Say connect. And uh, then if we click here, uh, here we can see app templates. Uh, but what we want to do first is actually go to settings. Um, and then we want to use external templates. We want to turn that on. And so now it wants a URL for a templates.json file, uh, just as an example there. So if we come back over to here and grab this URL um, and paste this in here, and I'm going to open up app templates over here in a separate tab real quick. So we can see we've got registry, Nginx. Uh, we've ju just got a few. Uh, different options in here. This is all the stuff that comes by default with Portainer. So now that we've pasted this in here, uh, we can then click Save Settings. Uh, it looks like everything there was good. So if I refresh this page, now we've got a whole bunch of additional things here. Um, everything from guacamole, jellyfin, Bitwarden, uh, pie hole, uh, Hoogle. I actually really want to take a look at Hoogle. Uh, it says it's a free or self-hosted ad-free privacy respecting Google Meta Search engine. So I definitely want to take a look at that. Uh, we've also got some stuff like MStream that we've talked about in the past, YouTube Download, Dash Machine, um, uh, Organizer, we've done uh, Watchtower, we've done Transmission, we've done Air Sonic. Uh, there's, so there's a lot of these we've already done and there's some that we haven't. Uh, so this is kind of a cool opportunity to look at some different applications. So. Um, I believe, uh, based on the conversation I was having uh, with the two guys that were working on this, that some of these will have some notes. Uh, so let's actually start here. Let's start with Google. 
uh, just to see kind of what's going on. Um, nope, none of that. So theoretically, uh, all I should have to do here. Okay, so this is actually what I wanted to see. We've got advanced options here. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I like to have uh, all of my applications have their configuration information in one central location. So uh, what we want to do first then is actually go back uh, to port 81 uh, so I can take a look at, um, uh, we're going to say no to that, uh, so that we can take a look at our shared folders here. Um, and we actually want to create a new shared folder. I want to call this config. Uh, again, I like to have all of my application configuration stuff in one area, just easier to manage that way. So we're going to go ahead and select uh, the external hard drive that I've already mounted. And for permissions, uh, just to make things easy, I like to make sure the permissions are everybody can read and write. And then we'll say save. And now it's going to pop up a yellow bar up here saying, hey, you got to do another save. There it is. We're going to skip that for right now. Uh, what we're going to do is go to here to SMB CIFS. Uh, we're going to make sure that's enabled and we'll click save. And then we'll click shares. We'll click on add a share. Uh, we're going to select the config share we just created. And again, for the ease of making it super accessible to the system, we're going to say public is read only, or sorry, is only guests. Uh, and then we'll click save. And now we can come up here and click apply and say yes. So then once that's done, uh, we can actually go get the absolute path for that configuration folder and put that, sorry, what a jerk, a uh, real loud truck out there. Uh, then we can come over here to the advanced options and we can um, uh, go ahead and put in here the, uh, the container and the host. Uh, the container, this should be fine, uh, but for the host, we're gonna wanna put uh, the absolute path uh, for that configuration in there. So we'll go to shared folders. Uh, we don't see an absolute path here. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just hover over one of these. I'll go to columns and toggle absolute path on. And then we can drag this over. And here is our absolute path. Uh, so we'll say inspect. I'll just go ahead and double click that. Say copy. Uh, so then what we'll do like so, and we're just gonna change that to be on our external drive. Uh, I just, again, I like to have everything in one central location. Uh, but with all of that done, uh, we can see that we're gonna be on port 5001 um, and everything else here should be good to go. Uh, of course, I haven't done any of this yet. So this is all uh, making a lot of assumptions here. So let's go ahead and click on deploy the container and see what happens. All right, so uh, it says that it's up and running. Let's go ahead and take a look at the logs. Uh, that looks good. It says it's running on 5,000, uh, but like I mentioned a moment ago, we're actually going to be on 5,001. Uh, so let's change that to 5,001. And there is Hoogle. Uh, so that was neat. Uh, let's do uh, DB uh, Tech. Oops, if I could spell my name. Tech Reviews. Like, so you know what? Let's do the .com and do a search. And uh, that, that actually seemed to work. Uh, so that's cool that Google actually worked. I don't know where it's getting its information. I, I don't know uh, much about Google, but I do know that we just installed uh, the Google app on our uh, portainer setup uh, with just a couple of clicks. So that's actually pretty neat there. So let's go back, take a look at the, not the stacks, the app templates, and uh, let's see what else we've got here. Let's, you know what, let's try this. Uh, we're gonna do pie hole here. Uh, so we'll go ahead uh, all of this looks fine. Uh, all of that looks good. There's no configuration folder that we need to mess with here. Um, so uh, what we should be able to do is just click on deploy the container. Uh, and hopefully this will work. Uh, again, this is all uh, brand new, fresh stuff to me. And I kind of did that on purpose uh, because uh, I wanted to show, uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully how easy it would be to go from uh, no experience to having apps up and running in a very short amount of time. And uh, it looks like Okay, so they've already got something on port 53. Um, this is uh, something I just don't understand um, why why that is. So maybe we won't uh, we won't put a lot of effort into that. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the containers here. Uh, so it, it tried to create it, but uh, for some reason something else is already running on port 53. I don't know if it's because um, we've got a TCP and a UDP going on here that Portainer doesn't like. Uh, but for some reason, this isn't going to install for us. So uh, let's go back and take another look at a different app template here. Uh, app templates, there we go. 
Uh, so Homer, uh, let's no, let's do. Oh, let's do Dash Machine. Uh, so again, uh, advanced settings here. Uh, so this is the container, this is the host. Uh, so again, what we want to do is come back over to here. Uh, I should already have this, like so. And uh, we'll go ahead and paste that in and put a, tr a slash. Uh, so this is going to run on uh, port 5000. Let's change it to 5500, uh, like so. And uh, then we should be able to click on deploy the container. Again, we'll give this a minute to do its thing and uh, see what happens next. Uh, that was easy enough. So running on port 5500, um, looks like it's booting presently. So we'll give this another second or two. Um, so let's let's jump over here uh, just because I'm impatient, like so. Okay, so version five, uh, we'll just say, yeah, we read that. Uh, we'll go to the login, uh, we'll say admin and admin. And just like that, now we've got, uh, uh, gosh, what is it called again? Dash machine. Man, have it a morning. So now we've got two apps installed in just a couple of minutes. Uh, very, very much just a kind of a one-click install. Again, I like to manipulate things a little bit to move my configuration folders over to uh, a separate drive where everything is contained. Uh, but you could do, you could go through this whole process and do the exact same thing with things like, um, like, let's see, they've got, oh, that's not what I meant to do, darn it. I'm pretty sure they've got Plex in here. And uh, let's see here, Plex. So they do have Plex, they've got Jellyfin. Um, so they've got all kinds of stuff in here uh, that you should theoretically be able to run with just a couple of clicks. And that is very, very cool. Um, so what we're gonna do here, uh, again, we're back over here on the post that they made. Um, again, there will be a link to this post, a link to uh, their GitHub, as well as directly to this JSON file down below, uh, whether it's in the blog post or in the description, I haven't decided yet, but something down there uh, will get you to where you wanna be. Um, so uh, also they do have a Git, not a GitHub, they've got a Discord, uh, and they actually encouraged me to share that Discord with you. So if you've got questions, comments, ideas, things you'd like to see added, that sort of thing, uh, you can definitely check out their Discord and talk to them there directly rather than trying to message them, uh, you know, through like Reddit or something like that. Uh, you can do it in real time over on their Discord channel. Uh, I actually haven't joined that yet, but I will. So you can probably find me there as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you found this video uh, helpful uh, in knowing that you can add app templates directly to Portainer and add, uh, in this case, they've got 83 apps, but that may change. Uh, I, I know that they're working on, on adding more. Um, so definitely go throw your opinion at them in their Discord server if you want to know, or if you want specific apps to be added to the mix here. So I think with all that being said, I pretty much covered everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you found it helpful, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up. If you enjoy videos like this, definitely get subscribed. Got lots more new content coming out very soon. Uh, and while you're down there in the description looking for links, that sort of thing, there will be a couple of other links down there. One for coffee, one for Patreon, for different ways to support the channel. Uh, coffee, of course, is a one-time tip jar, uh, whereas Patreon, you can become a patron at a few different levels. A couple of those levels will give you access to a uh, patrons-only Discord server where we can hang out and chat as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.